As you can see, I have all of the parts to build the Dremel CNC, second Dremel CNC to be precise. So why not to make one? Let's do this. You may ask me why I'm building another Dremel CNC. I already have one, I don't really need one, but there is this spindle that I bought quite a long time ago and I wanted to make a test of it. And I thought it would be way cooler to have two CNC machines, one with Dremel and one with this spindle to really test in depth if this spindle is better than Dremel. It's a little bit more expensive, it's a little bit more powerful, but the biggest advantage of this spindle is this collet. You can mount a lot of different bits. With Dremel you can use only bits with 1 8 of an inch shank. And with this thing you can change the collet and use pretty much everything up to I think 6mm or something like this. In this video I'm not going to make an in-depth test of the spindle that will be one of my next videos. Because today I wanted to just quickly assemble the CNC and show you the spindle but I thought that maybe it's a good idea to assemble the CNC again and show you the whole process very precisely. So instead of four videos that I previously made about Dremel CNC, I will make just one and I will connect the frame assembly, electronic assembly, Arduino programming, pretty much everything in one single video to make it easy for you to build your own Dremel CNC. I will also try to explain better things like Arduino programming and electronics connection because a lot of you face problem with that. I already have all of the parts prepared. Uh, maybe you need to prepare some of them like for example, those rods, you probably need to cut them. I already bought the proper length of them online, I just found the service that cut them for me, so I don't have to do this. But I had, I had to cut those aluminum profiles. This one is 60 centimeters long, and I also need four of them that are 30 centimeters long, so I just cut two of those in half. And now I have the aluminum profiles already cut it. And also later, I need to cut the lead screws, but I'm not sure about the proper length, so I will measure and cut them later. Once we have all of the parts, we can start assembling the Dremel CNC, the second Dremel CNC. The very first thing to do is to create thread in this hole and hole on the other end. In those short aluminum profiles, in just two of them, we need to create threads with a tab, that's M6 tab. It's also a good idea to pre-drill those holes with 5mm drill bit. Uh, and while making, a, while making a thread with this tab, you should apply a little bit of WD-40 to make it easier. After making threads in smaller aluminum profiles, we have to drill holes in longer aluminum profiles. And for that, there are two super useful things. First one is a drill press, even the simplest, the cheapest one. And second thing is 3D printed tool. You can find this thing on my Thingiverse, on the Thingiverse of Dremel CNC project. What does it do? You can put it at the end of aluminum profile like this. And now it's super easy to drill a hole perfectly where it should be. Now we could start assembling the frame, but before assembling the frame I prefer to put all of the bearings inside 3D printed parts and now a few words about 3D printed parts. This hole for the bearing, the diameter of this hole is 21 mm. The outside diameter of this bearing is 22 mm, so this hole is undersized for this bearing. But that's not a design error, I actually done it on purpose. Depends on your printer and settings, dimensions may vary a little bit. If I would make this hole perfectly for the size of the bearing, you may end up with slightly bigger hole, so that way you need to use some kind of glue or other unprofessional methods to fix the bearing in place. That's why I made them slightly smaller so that you can easily sand them down with a file and basically you don't have to change anything in the 3D printed parts, they work perfectly the same for everyone. Also be very gentle while putting the bearings in place because it's quite easy to break those 3D printed parts. And the last thing, uh, because a lot of people are confused, yes, you need 12 linear bearings for this project. You need two of them for this part, two of them for this part, four for this part, and four for this spindle carriage.
I think about half of the CNC is ready. Uh, because I broke the cutters, I had to print them again. And the only color, the only filament that I have right here is black. So those are black right now. And now I need to measure how long the screw for the X axis should be. Because I bought it slightly too long. So I will put it in place and just roughly measure that. Okay. You can cut this thing with basically anything, you can use even hand saw, but because this is pretty hard still, the best way to cut it is to use an angle grinder. If you are building a CNC with exactly the same dimensions as I do, you don't have to buy two separate lead screws for the Z and X axis, you can just buy one that is 40 cm long, measure and cut a piece for the X axis and what's left is almost perfect for the Z axis, I just have to cut like 5 mm of that and it will be perfect. At the table of the CNC I will use again plywood, in the first CNC I use 10mm thick plywood and this time I will try with 6mm, that way I will have 4mm more of the workspace on the Z axis and to cut this plywood you can use anything, jigsaw, hand saw, but I will use table saw because it's the easiest thing for me to use. For drilling holes in this plywood I designed another 3D printed tool, you can also find it on my Thingiverse. And with this you can put it on the edge of the plywood and just mark where the hole should be. So that way you have a perfect distance from the edge of the plywood to easily fix it to the CNC machine. At this point we have to disassemble the front part of the CNC, we have to take out those screws Take out this part, put the table in place and assemble that again. I know we could do that before, we could put the table in place before, but I think it's actually easier to do that way. We are done with the mechanical assembly, the frame is pretty much ready. Now we can upload the code to the Arduino, the GRBL, and there was a lot of problems with that, you had a lot of questions about how to upload the GRBL to Arduino, so I will show you that step by step, but for that I need an internet connection, so I have to get out for a moment. Of course, first thing to do is to download the GRBL, and to do that we have to type GRBL in the browser. The first link is to the GitHub, go to this one and because there is a new version of GRBL called 1.1 we have to click right here here you can find the source code that zip download this one now we can move the downloaded thing on the desktop and in the finder go to the documents Arduino libraries and then I already have the GRBL here so let me delete that open the thing that you just downloaded. Right here there is GRBL folder, so copy that to the library folder. And that's pretty much it. Now we can open the Arduino IDE, connect the Arduino to the computer, now go to File Examples, find GRBL and choose GRBL Upload. 
as you can see there is almost nothing, there is just one include and a lot of comments, but that's fine. Click upload and once it is done you can check if everything is fine, open the serial monitor and type two dollar signs. Everything is fine as you can see. And that's it, pretty simple to do, there is really not a lot of things you have to do to upload the GRBL to the Arduino. Now we can go back and connect the electronics, connect the CNC shield and test if it works. Here is a freezing schematic, pretty simple to use and read. If you need more info on how to connect all of that, you can find it in the instructable link is in the description. And now I should use some jumpers to enable micro stepping on the stepper drivers, but because I don't have any jumpers, I think I will just simply solder them on the other side of this shield. Power supply for this spindle is quite big and bulky, so to mount it, I designed this very simple holder. You can put the power supply like so right here. Here is the place for this potentiometer. It controls the speed of the spindle. And then you can attach this holder to the side of the CNC machine, just like the electronics box. And I also think I will drill a hole in the aluminum profile right here and on the other side to connect the power supply to the spindle and to put this cable together with the other cables. And the little brother of the original Dremel CNC is ready. As you can see, I did the cable management with this cable wrap. It looks really nice. It's basically the same machine with different spindle. I already connect that to the computer. And as you can see, it works fine without any problems. I didn't test the milling yet, but I think it should be fine. I'm not going to do this in this video because it's probably already really long. I have over 100 gigabytes of footage on my SD card. I decided to replace the cutters on the Y axis. I just recently got them. It took a long time to ship them from China to me, but I finally have them and I'm also going to replace them on the X and Z axis, but just not yet. Uh, there is also the cable for the Z probe that I already made a video about. You can find it right here. Uh, the Z probe works, I already tested. Everything seems to be fine. Let me show you how to control the, the spindle right here. Right here there is a knob, as you can see. And with this knob you can simply turn on the spindle, like so. You can increase the RPMs of this motor. At max speed this motor is quite loud. But if you go like only half of the potentiometer, it's really quiet compared to Dremel. I almost forgot about one really important thing that you have to do in CNCJS in the console. As you can see, there is a lot of different values. And we need to change the X, Y and Z axis travel resolution. And right here you have to type your value. In my case, that's 400 for X and Z axis. And for Y axis, this is 800 and just click enter. And that's it, you have to do that for X, Y and Z axis, depends on the lead screws that you use and micro-stepping of your motors. You can also change right here acceleration, 
travel speed and everything just like this with dollar number equals number that's it for this video i'm really sorry that i didn't show you any meaning on this new machine i will do that probably in the next video where we will test this spindle a little bit more i hope that this video will be helpful for all the people that want to build dremel cnc i already made four or, or even more videos about Dremel CNC, so definitely check them out. There is also a link to Instructables where everything is quite detailed described, so it's pretty easy to build the Dremel CNC. There is a Facebook group where you can ask questions. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Happy making. Bye.